Washed Up, written by Layla Ben Abdallah. Interior, a casting office, Midtown Manhattan Day. Lena Haddad, an attractive 30-year-old Arab-American actress, is reading an audition for a casting director. Ronnie the intern, nerdy and 19, sits across from her. It was irresponsible of the prosecution not to order DNA testing of the rogue Fabis. Be careful, DeGrasse. He could easily destroy a novice detective like you. Then let him. I'm not going to see an innocent man put away for life because- And let's just pause there. Thank you so much. Great read. <clears throat> Shall I just move on to the next set of science? Or? No, I don't think I need to hear the rest. Thanks for coming in. Sorry, I, I promised I wouldn't, but when I heard you were auditioning today, I, I, wouldn't, I, I couldn't resist. Will you sign my Spaceship Neutrino Collector's Edition Blu-ray box set? That's not very professional. Really, I don't mind. I'm flattered. Actually, I'm glad someone pointed out the elephant in the room. Lena, you're a good actress, but I'm casting a dry police procedural. When I look at you, all I can see are spaceships blowing up and laser guns and, well, that double cleavage. Cut to interior flashback, Spaceship Neutrino Night. A clip from Spaceship Neutrino, Lena is dressed as Queen Diadem, a majestic woman alien, seven feet tall with three giant breasts. She stands at the helm of a spaceship surrounded by attendants of the same alien race. Explosions rock the, sh the spaceship. Engage the supersonic accelerometer. We're losing soldiers fast and we're nearly out of monopropellant. Sometimes the hearts of the few must cease to beat to save the many. The eyes blink in unison. Cut back to interior of the casting office, day continuous. When those idiot writers had you die in the epic battle against the Proltar clones, I nearly boycotted the show. But the secret love story subplot between Prince Fortinlax and the servant Gembo was just heating up and, and you understand. That's enough, Ronnie. I I'm sorry, Lena. It it's just not going to work. Thanks so much for coming in. You, you can get your parking validated. No, wait, please. I haven't had an audition in months. Um, I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid, my outside had not charged. You're very nice, but we're not doing Shakespeare. I thought it was beautiful. Cool it, Ronnie. You know, we're done here. Okay, okay. Just, just one thing. Use me, choose me. God, I'm a dancer. A dancer dances. The guys in my large group are never going to believe this. Ronnie, zip it. Look, I don't have time to... How many times have I auditioned for you over the years? Once? Why don't you come over here and smell my hair? Take a walk, Ronnie. I'm, I'm sorry, no. It's no problem. I can give you two a minute. I, I, I swear I don't have to sign off on your college credit. Lena, I think you should leave. <sighs> Fine, I'll leave. You can deny me a job, but at least I have my dignity. Queen Diadem, wait, heart of hearts. There were Queen Diadem's dying words. As she heads for the door, she passes Ronnie the intern who smells her hair. Wow. Be still, my beating limbic system synapses. I wish anybody but your father had pulled me out of that ravine in 1982. End of cold open, Act 1. Interior and Midtown office later that day. Barry Levine, 66, Lena's longtime agent, is shouting into the phone. Lena sits across from her at a desk that is cluttered with headshots, resumes, and sides. I told you! Until I get my test results, no big decisions. Because I'm the boss and I say so, you little shit. Okay, love you. Yeah, I'll pick you up after shock to practice and we can stop for a happy meal before math tutoring. Barry hangs up the phone. Got kids? Nope. <laughs> yeah, of course not. You millennials, you're all married to your principals and mother to your iPads. I'm a little too old to be a millennial. She's old, she tells me. When you've got inoperable bunions and a teenager who orders you around like a sweatshop foreman, then you can call yourself old. Now, why are you here? Well, you told me I should be more proactive on my end of our business relationship, so I thought we could talk about some great projects for which I would love to be submitted. Yeah, I got you booked for a Queen Diadem appearance at the Topeka Comic Con next month. I really don't want to do any more Comic Cons after the last one. Cut to interior flashback, Dubuque Comic Con Day. Lena as Queen Diadem in, in a blow-up kiddie pool full of jello, wrestling with a gold bikini Princess Leia, a Spock referees. The match heats up and Princess Leia rips off Lena's fake third boob out of her costume. The onlookers scream in shock. Cut back to interior Barry's office day. Okay, you're right. I know the role of a lifetime. Want it? Great, yes. The role is an actress who does what her agent tells her to do and doesn't jaw back. 
Now, there's a grand opening of a car dealership in Coxsackie Village that needs a ribbon cutter. Cool two grand for the day. Look, I printed some casting breakdowns. Lena hands a stack of papers across the desk. The Actors Theatre of Moscow, all-female U.S. production of Hamlet. It's a role I never dare dream of playing, but a female Hamlet? I always thought that the role was such an amazingly complex balance of masculine and feminine... It's regional theater out of Washington, D.C. Look, I took down too many dicks in the 70s to, to submit my actors for regional theater. But it pays three fifty a week, plus housing. Yeah, and Topeka is offering you four grand for a three-hour appearance. It's just numbers, kid. I've been doing a lot of positive visualizations, and I really feel like if we just move away from all this sci-fi stuff, I could do some really great work as a legitimate actress. And if we really lean into this sci-fi stuff, I can pay for my kid to study experimental Cantonese dance. Look, I got you a meeting with MTV Two and a Half for their new Monday morning reality show, Celebrity Foxy Boxing. I made an inspiration for it. Lena unfolds a vibrant and busy collage on her large piece of butcher paper. See, over here, I photoshopped my name on the marquee of the Schubert Theater. Built above the title of the show. Honey, I've got a headache. The musical. It's a musical version of Liz Estrada. And over here is a portrait of Sir Francis Bacon. They say he was the one who actually wrote Shakespeare's plays. And Lena, this is very thorough. But your queen died again. You know how many actors would kill to have such a profitable personal brand? If you're not going to capitalize on it, then, then the agency is going to have to drop you. Brought me? Barry, when I booked Spaceship Neutrino, this agency had not had a successful client since the monkey from Dunstan Checks In died of liver failure. I miss that drunk bastard every day. Look, I don't want to drop you. Give me a reason to keep you. I'm an artist. Yeah, so is the teenager who makes my roast beef sub every Saturday night. And you know what happens after I eat it? It stews in my stomach acid. And after that, I shit it out. And after I shit it out... Thank you, but I don't need a lesson in the mechanics of the alimentary canal. I think it's clear that we're done here. Are you seriously dropping me? Can I get security in here? I can see myself out, thank you. But let me just say one thing. In one swipe, Lena knocks the entire mess off Barry's desk. She turns to run out of the office and runs smack into a security guard who restrains her with plastic handcuffs. He drags her, protesting, through the waiting room of Barry's office, where Barry's intern, 20, is removing a six-foot by, six by four-foot framed Spaceship Neutrino poster from the wall. I got a can of bear mace and no sense of right and wrong. Exterior outside the office, moments later, security guard escorts Lena out to, to the sidewalk and uncuffs her. How was that for you? Intimidating? I'm just a rent-a-cop now, but I'm saving up for police academy tuition. You did great. Dream big. Wow. Thanks! The security guard strolls back into the building, genuinely encouraged by her words. Lena spots Barry's intern placing the huge spaceship neutrino poster among a pile of trash bags. She storms over and grabs him by the collar. Just what the hell do you think you're doing? I'm sorry, Your Majesty. This internship only pays a $5 metric card reimbursement. Please don't hurt me. Heart of hearts. Lena puts him down. Get out of here. The intern scurries away. Lena picks her way over the trash bags. One rips open and shredded paper scatters all over the sidewalk. That should be recycled. This office should be fined. She trips and falls over another bag. Trash is in her hair, and her hands and dress are filthy. Finally, she reaches the poster, lifts it out from among the bags, and hoists it over her back. People stop and stare. What are you all staring at? What's wrong? Can't handle a strong woman? She teeters and falls and lays on the trash bags, dejected. Exterior, a street corner, minutes later, Lena, filthy and covered in garbage, is trying to hail a cab. A giant poster is leaning on a telephone pole. Cabs whiz past her, some slow to, s to a stop, check her sorry state, shake their heads, and keep driving. After the tenth cab blows her off. I've memorized your medallion number. I'm calling 311. A homeless woman approaches Lena. You got a place to sleep tonight, sister? Yes. Wait, what? The homeless woman gives Lena a handful of coins. We street people gotta look out for each other. I live in an illegal sublet, thank you very much. Exterior, a street in New York City, minutes later. Lena ambles along with the poster on her back like a mule, blocking most of the sidewalk. There is a small traffic jam of people trying to pass her, yelling different rude New York-y things. Someone tags the glass on the poster. It's so big, Lena doesn't notice. Exterior, a crosswalk minutes later. Lena is waiting to cross the street. A little boy is holding his mom's hand. Fart of farts! Whatever, kid. Comes with the lowest form of humor. Don't look, honey. Failure is contagious. 
The light changes and they cross. The cab makes a turn in front of Lena and splashes gray gutter water on her legs. Exterior, a block in Chinatown. 40 minutes later, it's narrow, crowded, and lined with fish and vegetable vendors. Lena struggles down the middle of the street. A delivery man on a bike tries to pass her, but hits the poster and falls off his bike. Interior, the dingy hallway of Lena's building. Minutes later, Mrs. Bobrowski, an elderly Polish woman and owner of the building, pokes her head through the, her apartment door. You! No sublets! You are a squatter! No, Mrs. Robowski. I promise. I'm just visiting Carla. I'm not living here. I'm calling the police. I'm having you arrested, squatter. She disappears back into her apartment and slams the door. Interior outside Lena's apartment door moments later, there is a letter taped to the door reading final shut-off notice. Lena rips it down and struggles to get the poster through the door. Charlotte Bronte, Lena's fat, mean tabby, sits on the high shelf observing with disdain. Exterior Lena's fire escape a few hours later, night. Lena is in pajamas, smoking. Visible through the window is the poster dwarfing all the furniture in the room. S suddenly, the lights flicker and go out. Lena takes out her phone and FaceTime calls her father, Amir, 55. He's youthful, handsome, and bodies foreign guy, cool, complete with charming accent and expressive manners. Lena, Habiti, it's Dad. Yeah, Dad, I know. I called you. Interior, a hip nightclub, the other side of the call. It's packed, scantily clad women dance and drink. Amir lounges against the bar, totally out of place, but somehow completely at home. Lena, your brother, he's DJing tonight. We are at the Boom Boom Room on U Street. Look! Amir points the phone towards DJ booth where his son, Adam, 23, is spinning. He's boyishly handsome and, cl and clearly the coolest guy in the room. People stop by the booth to high-five him and beautiful women lounge nearby, grooving to the music. Adam! Adam! Your sister! Adam sees Amir goofily waving the phone. He smiles and waves. What is it, Abiti? Dad, this is really hard to ask, but can I move in with you and Adam for a little bit? Of course! Oh, I'm so happy! Adam! Adam! Adam points the giant headphones on his head and shrugs. Amir is persistent. Adam takes off the headphones. Dad, what's up? Your sister is moving in with us! A beautiful woman walks by and briefly distracts Amir. Hello. No shit, that's awesome! He flashes a thumbs up and goes back to spinning. Amir turns the phone back to himself. He has a big, goofy grin on his face. The phone freezes. Dad! Dad, you're frozen. I'll call you later. Charlotte Bronte slinks over the windowsill and fixes a withering gaze on Lena, he, who strokes her lovingly. Well, Charlotte Bronte, looks like you and I are moving in with your grandpa and Uncle Adam for a little while. Charlotte Bronte mews softly. Whatever, you get a job. End of Act 1. Act 2, exterior Chinatown, Washington, D.C., one week later. Amir and Adam watch as a bus pulls up and Lena steps off, dragging a rolling suitcase and lugging a cat carrier containing a furiously yowling Charlotte Bronte. There is laughing and hugging. Look at me. I'm an old man, but I have my health, and I'm surrounded by my beautiful children to see me through my twilight years. How blessed am I? Twilight years? Come on, Dad, you can do like 100 push-ups. Yeah, it's true. I'll show you. Mary gets down on the sidewalk and begins effortlessly doing push-ups. Dad, Dad, what are you doing? I read in The Economist that there are billions of particles of crack cocaine and feces on every inch of a city sidewalk. Uh, you'll be quiet. I am from a third world country. My immune system is strong like a lion's. I got this. Dad, do you think that woman checking you out is Vietnamese or Laotian? Amir is quickly on his feet. A beautiful Asian woman is standing a few feet away, smiling flirtatiously at Amir. Southeast Asian? Where? You give me ten minutes. Excuse me, mademoiselle. May I ask you a very deeply personal question? Well, here I am. I remember when you dropped me off right at the same bus stop 12 years ago. I was going to New York to become a legitimate actress. Now look at me, a washed up dealer celebrity who can't get a job. Come on, you did that sweet reality show last spring. What was it called? Celebrity Bathtub. Dad tape every episode. Cut to an interior flashback. Set of Celebrity Bathtub Day. Lena dressed as Queen Diadem, sits in a bathtub in a bubble bath. She speaks into the camera, reality TV, confessional style. I didn't get into this bathtub to make friends. Cut back to exterior DC Chinatown Street Corner Day. See previous statement, washed up. Come on, Rumi, it's not so bad. We're gonna have a blast. I'm opening for Wiz Khalifa when his tour comes through DC next week. A copy, VIP. Damn, Adam. Who knew this sensitive band geek would become the biggest hip hop producer in Washington DC? Biggest. Nah, I mean, I do all right. Amir walks back over, proudly brandishing the woman's card. Are you kidding me? You said ten minutes. Why can't I pick up women like, like that? 
because I am, I am like a Poligny's Montrachet wine. I only get better with age. You are a 40 ounce of malt liquor. Now pay up. Adam grumbles and hands a mirror a five dollar bill. We have a running bet. If it takes him ten minutes or less to get the number, I give him five bucks. I am getting rich off this kid. Dad, can you spot me some dollars for a slushie? Of course, Habibi. Here is five dollars. He hands him back the five dollar bill. Interior of the condo, a little later, it's as if an invisible line has been drawn down the middle of the condo. One side is in complete chaos with pizza boxes stacked to the ceiling, a big screen TV, and a car seat that has been reclaimed as a living room chair. On the other side of the line is a beautiful oriental rug, framed paintings on the wall, and an impressively stocked bar. I, I just don't think I should have to do dishes if I don't ever use the kitchen, you know? Because it is your turn, and I am the dad, and I say you must. Maybe that worked when I was like nine years old, but we split the random bills. You can't give me chores, I'm a grown ass man. Touche, touche. It's true, you are a grown ass man. Adam and Lena snicker at his misplaced emphasis. My son, I will raise you to be a proud, strong ass man. What? Why are you laughing? Go forth, my son. Grab me the ass. Make proud the ass man tradition of your forefathers. You be quiet. I swear I have enough with your brother. I'm always making fun of my accent. And now with you here, I will never have peace. Oh, come on, Dad. We're not making fun of you. We're celebrating you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, here is your room. Amir gestures to the room that is meant to be the dining room, but contains only a very comfy-looking bed. No door? We will hang some tapestries fit for a queen. Amir suddenly looks very mischievous. Uh, Adam, my son, would you please uh, get some curtains from the hall closet? What? No, get it yourself. Oh, please, my son. I'm an old man. I am weak. Fine. They're in the closet next to my titanium Bowflex Max Trainer chin-up bar. And it opens the hall closet and a giant stuffed bear, bigger than he is, falls out and knocks him down. He shouts, Pay up! Barry Hollywell! Oh my god, I haven't seen this thing in 20 years. Where did you find it? We found it in the garage when mom and dad split and we moved it into this place. <laughs> you pay me now. I got you. Another bet? Yep. Yeah. He hands Amir a five dollar bill. Dad, can I bum five bucks for a slushie? Of course, Habibi. I won for your sister. Amir hands Adam a five dollar bill. Interior snacky mart, a convenience store night. Go crazy, Lena. Buy whatever boogie top shelf shit your heart desires. Daddy's paying. No way. I'm serious. He gave me five bucks. You saw it. No, look at this. Lena has found a box of Spaceship Neutrino promotional cereal with a cartoon of herself as Queen Diadem on the front. Musa, the Sengalese snack mart owner, operator, rushes over. We have to buy it. No, no, please put that down. I am so sorry. It should not be on the shelves. It is sold. It is probably poisoned. Please don't call my sister it. Lena punches him in the arm. Hey, I know you. Yeah, yeah, I do. I am a friend of your father's. We were bus boys together at TGI Fridays when we were both new to the USA. No shit. How did you recognize us? I am friends with your father on MySpace. He posts photos and news. He is so proud of you both. MySpace was only for music now. Yeah, it is. Cut to interior flashback of recording booth day. Amir's singing is energetic and joyful, but slightly off key. His accent ever present. Adam sits at the control board, his expression pained. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she precious? Cut back to interior snacky mart night. I didn't know that. No one tells me anything. Take the cereal, but promise me you won't eat it. And Lena, take a picture with me for the official Wisconsin Avenue Snacky Mart Instagram. Adam snaps a photo with Musa's phone. Constance, 29, enters. She's blonde, type A. She selects an energy drink and takes it to the counter. Lena? Lena Hadid? As I live and breathe. Constance Cassidy, my nemesis. Cut to interior flashback, high school auditorium day. Lena and Constance stand on a bare stage. There is a sign on the wall behind them that reads, Idlewood High School, Guys and Dolls, Callbacks. Constance sings the last line of Adelaide's Lament from Guys and Dolls and Tap Dances. A person can develop a bad, bad cold. Right, thank you, Constance. Your turn, Lena. Mike, take it from the top. Mike, the auditioner, pianist, a teenager with a large purple birthmark on his cheek, plays the song at almost quadruple time speed. Lena tries to take it in stride, but eventually dances so fast she passes out. Constant blows a kiss at in the wink, the audition pianist who blushes and blows a kiss back. 
Cut back to interior snacky Mark Knight. How's birthmark Mike? Mike? Oh my gosh, I haven't spoken to him in years. You're not still mad about guys and dolls? You are a fantastic back row hot box dancer. So, how long are you in town? Well, to be honest, I'm here indefinitely. Oh, is show business too hard for you? Take cheer, Lena. It's, it's not for everyone. Actually, I just have so many opportunities these days. I needed to take some time away to assess. You know, there's a, a really daring HBO sitcom, Hollywood stuff. What did, what did you end up doing after I got into Juilliard and you got rejected? Actually, I was waitlisted, and I have been doing quite a bit of theater down here in DC. I was honored last month at the Kennedy Center for my Beatrice and Much Ado at the Shakespeare Theater. It just feels wonderful to be taken seriously as a real actress, don't you think so? <sighs> Regional theater, how cute. You know, the word amateur has such a nasty connotation these days, but what it really means is someone who does something for the love of it. <laughs> Actually, I've never had a day job. I assume you would be back to bartending at your dad's bar. Actually, I'm working behind the bar to research a role. And what role is that? <laughs> Washed up D-list celebrity? Oh, Lena, I'm, I'm kidding. I, we're all friends. We can, we can just joke like that. <laughs> Marty, 43, an overweight man and too small stained wife beater, has been casing Lena for most of, of this conversation. Finally, he reaches over the aisle and offers Lena his hand for a handshake. Marty. Um, hi, Marty. You big fan. Oh. How nice. Sign this. He hands her his Blu-ray box set of Spaceship Neutrino. I'll do anything for my fans. What was your favorite episode? I like your three boobs. Will you buy some beer and cigarettes for my friends? He points to the window where two teenage boys are peering in. Of course she will. Anything for a fan, right, Lena? Musa has been chatting with Adam, but suddenly notices Marty. Oh no, no, you are banned. You get out of my store. He produces a yellow plastic wiffle ball bat from under the counter and chases Marty out of the door. Lena, are you okay? This man is very bad. I've banned him numerous times for sleeping in the employee bathroom. He lives upstairs. Why sleep in my bathroom? Well, I really must dash. I am playing Hamlet in the Actors Theatre of Moscow's all-female U.S. production. <laughs> I'd copy a ticket, but we're doing the first folio edition and I think it would just go right over your head. <laughs> oh, hell no. Adam walks over, sipping a slushy. Lena grabs it and throws the whole thing in Constance's face. Away, you moldy rogue, away. Oh, though sh she be but little, she is fierce. Constance grabs Lena by the hair and they grapple. Adam immediately jumps to protect Lena. Musa restrains Constance. Stop, stop it now. I will tell your father. Thou art uh, unfit for any place but hell. They lie deadly that tell you you have good faces. Oh, indeed. Well. Thou art the son and heir of a mongrel bitch. Speak English. This is the most real English you're ever going to hear in your damn life, baby. And this Fustelarian just insulted our mother. Oh, hell no. Fustelarian. Adam lets Lena go, and she rushes Constance. Musa ducks and gets his yellow plastic wiffle bat. Constance escapes. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Get out. Tell your father I said hello. He chases them, brandishing with a wiffle bat. They run out, but not before throwing the crumpled $5 bill on the counter and grabbing the Spaceship Neutrino bo cereal box. Act 3. Interior Amir's Wine Bar Day. Amir sits at the bar with his best friend and business partner, Adil, 54. They look over a stack of receipts from the night before, arguing quietly in that mix of, of Arabic and French that is specific to Tanzanians. Lena enters, wearing a t-shirt emblazoned with the bar's logo and a server apron she sighs heavily. Lena, Habiti, you look amazing. Your dad and I are so glad you'll be working with us. I wish I shared your enthusiasm. She goes behind the bar and polishes glasses. Let me ask you a question, your dad and I. People sometimes, we, they, they think we are gay for each other. Do you think we are gay for each other? That's not really a relative thing. I mean, you're not, right? Well, of course we are not. A lady told Adil she thought we were gay for each other, and now he won't shut up about it. Answer the question, Lena. No, Adil, I don't think you guys are gay for each other. Adam enters with Nadia, 21, his beautiful date. They sit at the bar. Yo, bartendress. Shut up. What can I get you? I want a Jack and Coke and Nadia here while they have. Uh, vodka soda. So, Adam, you own this place? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, pardonnez-moi, monsieur le proprietaire. Come on, 
Don't make me regret bringing my date here. She just really wanted to meet you. My baby brother and I fight, like, all the time over who's the bigger fan. <laughs> wow, that's nice to hear. And will you, um, oh gosh, I'm such a nerd. Say the line. Heart of hearts. Oh, oh, gee, I'm totally freaking out. I, I mean, love, I sci-fi. It's true, she does. We met a line to see Ender's Game in 3D. I love how it's like an allegory. Yes, an allegory. Nadia snaps a selfie with Lena awkwardly in the background behind the bar. Hashtag Queen Diadem Lives. Hashtag Amir Slime Bar. Hashtag Nerd Girl. Hashtag Nerd Girls Do Better. Hashtag Smart Women Wear Glasses and Love Sci Fi and Are So Sexy. Hashtag The. I, I think we get it. One more. Hashtag Best Date Ever. Amir notices Nadia and sidles over. Amir Hadid, I am the owner of this establishment and Adam's younger brother. May I ask you a very deep, very deep personal question? Do you think me and Amir look gay for each other? Jacob, 32, enters and overhears this last exchange. He's handsome, and it's clear Lena thinks so. Oh, God. This again? A deal, Amir. No one thinks you're gay. And don't sweat it. If people think that, it's not a bad thing. Sweat? Who is sweating? We are not sweating. We know it's not bad. The gays, they are my friends. Yeah, and mine. But if a beautiful woman thinks we are gay for each other, then maybe she won't. He switches to her Arabic, but it's clear he is being totally lewd. Adil and Amir snicker and shove each other playfully. Do you understand any of this? Yeah, um, you don't want to know. Hi, I'm Jacob, and you are doing my side work. Sorry, Amir, am I supposed to be off today? Jacob, you are a wonderful worker. You are not fired, but Lena will be taking some of your shoes. Oh my god, Queen Diadem. Heart of hearts. So, if I'm splitting my shifts with Queen Diadem, does that make me King Fortine, ruler of the planet Thelonious? It's planet Adomia. Thelonious was a jazz pianist. Answer the question. No. No, it does not. Killing your brother, Epicetus does. Naturally. Look, I really don't mean to be rude, but I can't afford to lose any shifts. Jacob, I'm sorry. I love you. Uh, not like a son, but like the son of a dear friend who I would buy Boy Scout cookies from. That's sweet. Boy Scouts don't sell. Oh, never mind. But Lena is my daughter, and she needs a job. <clears throat> I didn't expect when I moved to New York that I would still compete for serving gigs with out-of-work actors. This stings. Lena Clowers. Two teenage boys enter. One is lanky with terrible posture, and the other is pimply, fat, and baby-faced. They clutch spaceship neutrino merchandise in their arms. We, we don't have IDs. But we're 21, we swear. Well, right this way, gentlemen. Have a seat at the bar. They sit at the bar and gape at Lena. She looks as if Jacob has noticed her fans. He is unimpressed. <laughs> so it's true, Queen DNM is working right here in the Oakville Plaza strip mall. Heart of hearts. How did you find her? We saw her tweets. Yeah, I have like 800 followers. I'm kind of a Twitter famous person among sci fi fans. What <laughs> hole? Act nerdy, sexy, cool. Ni la sui. Beep, beep, woo. W what the hell? You just thank me in Klingon, Elfish, and Droid Binary. <laughs> will, 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 will you sign our DVD box sets? I bought it with my tax return money. Taxes are hard, right? And our coffee mugs. I, I can't do anything before I've had my coffee. Of course, I would be delighted. What are your names? I'm Shaquille. He's Florian. Oof, I'm sorry. Adam, don't be a bully. It's okay. I mean, we're used to it. We're always getting picked on at school. I mean, around the office. We only have two boobs. All right, just get out of here. Lena sides their things, and they scurry out. She looks to see if this impressed Jacob, but he has disappeared. Lena is dejected. Amir notices and wraps her in a big hug. Why are you sad, Amiti? You are young. You have your health. You are beautiful. You know, my father always said to me, when there are two drums on your face, you will have no rhythm in your chest. Yeah, you said that to me before. It still doesn't make sense. When there is a song in your heart, when your heart is beating, I'm trying to translate in my head. Take your time. The point is, you have everything. There is nothing to be sad about. I just feel so lost, like Jane Eyre wandering the moors. As usual, I do not understand your reference. Jane Eyre is a great feminist icon. When she loses her love... Habiti, Habiti, Habiti. I don't care. I have something for you. Amir takes down a beautiful old bottle from high on the shelf. 
30-year-old scotch. And as soon as he opens it, Adam smells it and perks up. Oh, no way, let me hit that. You be quiet. This is scotch fit for the queen. Amir pours two glasses. They clink and sip. Oh, damn. Good like butter. Y'all are jerks. My son, you are right. I am not being fair. Please, go to the kitchen and make me a muscle-building protein shake, and I will give you some scotch. Hell no, make your own shake. Please, my son, I'm an old man. I feel weak. Make Fine. me a muscle-building protein shake. Fine. Adam walks into the kitchen. He shouts with surprise and comes running out of the kitchen, lugging the giant bear, laughing. He hands Amir a $5 bill. Seriously, dude, not cool. Hey, Dad, can I borrow $5 for a slushie? Of course, Abiti. He hands Lena a $5 bill.